This is my colleague Lori and my colleague Shannon. We have, um, we have been selected as the representatives for Cluster B. So first we would like to thank Cluster B for voting for us and trusting us to best represent your work as a cluster. Thank you all for being here. Today our focus is on um, what we have learned throughout the access year. And the theme that we've explored in all of our classes is this theme of poverty. So today we're presenting our capstone project, which is titled International Perspectives on Poverty. Um, our particular angle on that theme is the many faces of poverty. So over the course of this year, we have explored poverty in every class, from our English composition class to our American cultures class to our research methods class even to our history class, even though it may not have been as direct. As we've explored this topic in all of these classes, we've come to a much deeper understanding of poverty than we did when we first began thinking about it. As many people in this audience probably do, the first images that came to mind when we thought about poverty are these images. One of The one on the left, is an image from the 1930s Dust Bowl. It's very common to an American audience, perhaps not as much so to an international audience. But this is an image of um, a migrant mother during the Dust Bowl in, the American, in, in America in the 1930s. Um, during that time, families were displaced and had to survive with very, very, very meager, in very, very meager circumstances. On the right is an image that is more common internationally, the image of the African child who is starving with an empty bowl of food. These are the very preliminary images we get when we think about poverty. However, as we started exploring the topic more, um, we realized that poverty is not relative and it is not necessarily so absolute. So, the concepts of poverty and the faces of poverty are much more um, hidden, perhaps, and not as obvious as these initial images that come to mind. So solutions to poverty shouldn't be so static, but creative and innovative um, to address the many different faces of poverty around the world. <coughs> Still, yeah. In our first class, uh, in our English composition class, we actually read four articles about poverty, but it addressed the different, different aspects of poverty and different phases of poverty, but specifically different solutions to poverty. Each one of these solutions was a creative solution. In the beginning when we read these four articles, we didn't really, we weren't really into these articles, right? We just read them, we took notes, and we kind of moved on. However, as we moved through the access program and we went to our American Cultures class and then our Research Methods class, we really, and went back to these articles to reread them and revise our summaries, we realized that they were actually very important and beneficial to us. These articles presented creative and innovative solutions to poverty. Among them was one that we were very particularly drawn to, which was such a simple solution and surprised us so much. Taking one vitamin per day, having each child in a school building be given one multivitamin in a day can save so many people from suffering in poverty. Nutrition can be the key to solving poverty. One vitamin can solve poverty. That to us was huge. So that could solve not just the, the one face we think of when we think about poverty, but so many kids in our school systems here in the United States, for example, as um, um, Shannon. But before we get to Shannon, <laughs> um, we wanted to, oh, we wanted to tie in our American culture class where we looked at different groups of people because like Anna said, you can see lots of different faces of poverty. And in American cultures, we were introduced to lots of different groups in the United States, and a lot of these uh, groups that don't have a lot of power politically or economically now who originally came as immigrants. So this is a 
very typical picture for Americans when we think of immigrants. That's the late 1800s, early 1900s. A lot of them came from parts of Europe where they spoke different languages than English. They had different religions, different practices. So those things made them different, and they were discriminated against and kept them kind of separate. And there was a cycle of poverty because of a lack of opportunity, especially because of education and jobs. And then the upper corner with the guy with the strawberries, that's a lot of Americans now when you think of an immigrant, especially if you say illegal immigrant, um, we think of these Latino groups. And in American cultures, we looked at Latinos as a subgroup. And what they face is that a lot of them, especially if they're illegal immigrants, because they're not given access to government support, no money, no education, keeps the poverty cycle going. And then the lower one, we looked a lot in American cultures, at African American cultures, especially the civil rights movement in the US in the 1950s and 60s, and how the discrimination based on race kept people poor because of lack of education, lack of jobs, and things like that. And that led us to um, Shannon's work. Thank you, yes. As, uh Anna and Lori have mentioned um, there are many different faces of poverty, and um, one of one of the key problems underlying poverty is poor education systems. So, after reading the uh, Paul Tuff article about what Obama wanted to do to address um, failing uh, educational systems in inner cities, um, I decided to conduct my research project for Pro 106 um, to see what kinds of things are, are taking place to improve education systems in these poor neighborhoods. Um, so I did a little bit of internet research and I found that Oscar F. Meyer Public School in Roseland, uh, Chicago, where President Obama was a community um, organizer, working to set up programs that help underprivileged youth uh, improve their educational opportunities, uh, I found out that there is yet another community organization, much like the one that uh, President Obama ran several decades ago, that is actively attempting to improve the chances of students in this underprivileged, very poor community to finish their education and therefore have more um, and better economic opportunities as adults. Um, the way that they're doing it, like Professor Habib, Anna, said, um, it, it sounds like a, a, a staggering problem that one person by themselves can't possibly hope to uh, you know, affect any sort of improvement on. But what this group is doing is they've identified a huge source of money in Chicago, the sports teams. Uh, you know there's baseball in Chicago, two teams, there's football, there's hockey. All of these professional sports organizations make tons of money every year. And so just a small percentage of their revenues, if they could donate that to uh, programs like the Youth Advocacy Program that was talked about in that Paul Tuff article, that might make a substantial um, improvement in the school system. So the way that they're doing this is through a simple Facebook campaign. They're just trying to spread information about what a huge problem uh, the lack of education in these uh, extremely poor urban communities is. And they're getting people to write emails to senators, write emails to uh, local politicians in Chicago, write emails to the owners of these sports teams in an effort to get them to donate, the, these extremely wealthy sports teams, to donate just a small percentage of their enormous profits to help these youth advocacy programs that might in turn help improve the chances of these very poor, underprivileged children in uh, inner city communities succeed in life. So that was when we wanted to add another page for our, you know, what we can do to take action, because we, all of this came together from all the classes all year long, and this is the organization Shannon's talking about, and this is orange shirt, very cool, right? <laughs> and um, we wanted to know how to reach them, but we decided we wanted to try to get a campaign together to get our friends involved, to not, you know, to help out not just like the sports teams, but uh, ourselves, and we thought we could try to do a small fundraiser as well. So, so all of this um, started in the in our English class reading these articles when we were sort of very disinterested and disengaged. We cared, but whatever, what can we do? And now we've come to the point
point after evo the evolving of our, the evolution of our thinking to this point where we actually are actively engaged in trying to do one concrete, tangible thing to address poverty. As the articles we read in the beginning of the year had creative solutions, we ourselves wanted to come up and participate in yet another creative solution to address the many faces of poverty. Thank you for your time, and again, Cluster B, thank you for believing in us, and we'll take questions now.